let's uh, let's switch let's switch gears to to round out the show with a uh, a reading series from in my opinion my favorite Ukraine expert my favorite foreign policy expert I'm talking I'm talking Russian star I'm talking Terrell Germain star aka Russian star he is uh, I don't know he's been I don't know he's embedded himself in in Ukraine he's been uh, traipsing around Kiev dressed like uh, you know fucking Santa Claus or something and uh, you know he's basically. <laughs> He's basically like the go-to guy on uh, all things Ukraine. So I, I figured I, we, we'd put our foreign policy expert up against, you know, I, I, I think, <laughs> you know, I mean, we'll, I king. mean, you know, like the king, the absolute king. I mean, just just real quick, though. I, uh, I mean, do, I do you guys, you guys have your, uh, you know, so, he's eating escargot and Lviv and taking donations from people to do it. It's. Uh, it's good, good stuff. Terrell Stars, he he's been a character for a while now, and just, just before, before I get into this reading series, uh, do you guys have any favorite uh, Terrell Star, uh, like like sort of greatest hits of all time? Because there, there there's oh a few my of them. God, there's so many. <laughs> um, we, I, we, I talked about a few of them before we recorded, but there is the one where he's like, um, uh, what's a good resource to read about uh, nuclear information and nuclear uh, information on nuclear weapons, and then like. I think like hours later was like, if you have any questions about uh, nukes, you know, just like ask me. Yeah, uh, that was as part of his brief uh, with Jalopnik as their defense <laughs> correspondent. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, what, the the um, the your name is Reek correspondents. What was certain, that again? <laughs> remember? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, he um, was um, treated very cruelly by a woman doing fin dom in front of everyone. Uh, I mean, who can forget the time that uh, Terrell uh, wrote a uh, just a, a really surprising restaurant review of a certain eatery in Kiev, a certain a certain <laughs> theme restaurant in Kiev that he had a great yeah. time uh, dining yeah. at. Yeah. Herschel's last resort. <laughs> <Little cosplay restaurant. laughs> yeah. yeah for, for people who don't know Herschel, or, uh, <laughs> Terrell, that's actually went, the name of it. It's Herschel's last resort. Yeah. He, he went to um, he went to a restaurant in Kiev. Where the waiters are dressed up like rabbis, and it's the theme is that it's a Jewish restaurant, and part of the experience is that you haggle your bill with your waiter. Yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, what was, it's like medieval times in the shtetl. Mm. I mean, essentially, it's <laughs> awesome. Uh, oh, I'm still like little ones, like uh, right sector in the his house. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was a great one. That was a great right one. sector in the his uh, the house. G, I mean, the GRU tweet we talked about. You know, he's, he's like three years into his career as an expert in Russia and Ukraine, and asking people on Twitter, like, "What is the GRU? <laughs> what is the? What do they do?" Uh, Gru, the time, it's the bad the guy time, from Minions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There was a time he he identified Odessa as being in Crimea. Uh, it is not in Crimea, but again, this was like three years or you know, a few years into his career as a Ukraine expert. I mean, basically, he's um, the, he's he's the go-to guy if you would like someone to write an article about how um, re refusing NATO membership to Ukraine is white supremacy and it's sent to white I, voices. I remember and another one, like there was some some flare-up in tension with North Korea, and just like very quietly, uh, his Twitter bio suddenly uh, was edited to include like expert in the Koreas, you know, like, you know into Korean relations or some shit. Well, like, I mean, you know, he, why not? He's an all purpose expert. He's the go to expert. And you know what? One of the things he's an expert in television shows. And, you know, I can relate. So th this is this is an, uh, this is a piece he wrote for the uh, the Daily Beast back in uh, 2016. But I think it's, I think it's worth revisiting today. The headline is simply Vladimir Putin is Russia's Marlo Stanfield. You, of course, you might <laughs> yes. remember Marlo Stanfield as the uh, villainous drug kingpin from a little show called The Wire. So let, let's let's dip into Terrell Star here. And like you know, I, everyone says if you want to understand what's going on in Ukraine right now, you want to you want to read into these tensions. The only thing that matters is just what's in Vladimir Putin's wily head. And you know, no one can really uh, suss out what's going on here, save for Terrell Star and vis-a-vis -vis HBO's The Wire. So. Uh, Terrell writes here, Russian President Vladimir Putin has a brother from another mother, Marlo Stanfield, the fictional kingpin from the classic HBO series The Wire. The gangster DNA both men share are almost identical. Both men are brief and to the point. Neither gives a fuck about rules that do not favor their own self-interest, nor do they have a problem tooling up if you threaten to undermine their authority. 
And the sooner American policymakers see the similarities, the better able Washington will be able. The be- <laughs> as soon as American policymakers see the similarities, the better able Washington will be able, will be able. To, to handle God, Putin's God, Moscow. Bomb pros here. Wow. <laughs> God, Wonderful. Oh my God. He, you know, that is the equivalent of watching an expert dog traipse through an agility course. <laughs> <verbally>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, 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 I have the. Um, I'm sorry. I have the. Um, I found the your name is re- correspondence, but uh, he's this woman was quote tweeting like a a guy trolling her, and Terrell's like, you know, oh, you have such interesting idiots in your mentions. You know, just like bad guy reply, and she's like, what? Are, what the like? What the fuck are you contributing? Are you are you helping anything but offering your pathetic commentary? Bye. And his <laughs> reply to her is. Well, I am sorry about that. And yes, I will contribute again. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So continuing on here, it says uh, the Russian leader wants to wear the crown to use some wire talk. He wants to have his own empire, just like America does. I mean, that's a hell of an admission by Terrell Starr there. (laughs) I just I think just uh, just Putin. He's uh, he's 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 meeting at the uh, the commission. One more thing. Price of natural gas going up. <laughs> uh, he says here, uh, it may be morally wrong to annex parts of Ukraine and to set up shop in the eastern part of its nation, but so what? That's what gangsters do. They take shit and ask any motherfucker to step up to them if they have a problem with it. In Putin's mind, he is doing nothing more than what America did to position itself as a world power. The United States was founded by white men who killed off American Indians who were here first and enslaved millions of people from Africa to build up the economy and later set up Jim Crow to keep black people in check for decades after that didn't work out. American global dominance exists in part because Washington killed off millions of people through war and slavery. That is what wearing the crown is about in international relations. Talking, taking shit because you can. Taking shit because you can. Wouldn't it be, shouldn't it be talking shit because you can? If you're wearing no, the crown, I, well, taking not shit. Taking, I mean, we're okay. taking. Oh, empire, I got taking. Right? Oh, I meant like okay, we're take plundering, take plundering yeah. not just like take. Okay, taking abuse from other people. Okay, I we're, got it. we're plundering the Afghan Central Bank, for example. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Now, now you may argue that drawing a comparison between a real life world leader and a fictional television character undermines the seriousness of any intellectual discourse on Putin's global <laughs> no, and domestic influence. No, I wouldn't no say that way, Terrell. No. I would not say that at all. Yeah. And anyone who if anyone who tries to tell you that they're the ones not being serious. Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna say right now if you say that you're a piece of shit and you don't know anything about either shows or foreign <laughs> policy. That's right. That's right. You got to know at least one of those things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Two he knows two things. A basic he knows two person. things. You got to pick one minimum. None. That's bad. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you here for? <laughs> what are you contributing, really? Unless yeah. you're yeah, financially yeah. contributing yeah, to this. Yeah. No, yeah. If you don't know about shows and you're not a foreign policy expert, just, you know, hit my cash app. That's all I can say. <laughs> well, uh, Terrell writes here, to the contrary, I believe Putin and Marlow sh- share the same worldview and operate within structural sh- structures that are equally broken and flawed. Understand one man and you'll get the other. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to know, I mean, just f- sure, fire up yeah. those DVD players. We're, we're revisiting seasons three through five of The Wire. Shouldn't doesn't this mean that we should make like David Simon the like Secretary yes, of State or yes. Secretary of Defense? He, he should be he should be our like our go to negotiator because you know if you understand if you understand the streets of Baltimore, then you understand what's happening in Ukraine right now. Because you know, like like you know, uh NATO, that's Avon Barksdale. That's Stringer and Avon. You know, they're gangster, <laughs> but you know, like they're they got a little soft, got a little complacent. And then like the, the this new cold blooded, ruthless uh, like street soldier is just stepping up and he's going to he's going to put he's going to put some lead in anyone who uh, uh, anyone who who, who uh, wants to take the crown from him. Oh, no. Here are examples to help. Putin took over eastern Ukraine in Marlowe fashion. And he has a quote here from the wire. This spot all built up and shit. We need it. Yo, that's what Marlowe Stanfield said. And that's, mm. what, and that, and that's what Putin's saying to the uh, eastern <laughs> Ukraine. He's saying That's we're facts. we're going to be pumping heroin out of Donbass. Yeah, and then and then uh, I can think of uh, some other classic wire characters. Uh, I think Obama fulfills two roles. He's Brother Mazone, you know, Muslim, <laughs> and he's also Omar. He's a gay man. 
<laughs> hey, and you know what? Like just like Brother Muzone, Obama loves reading the Atlantic Monthly and New mm-hmm. Republic. So yeah, there we go. That's the best. Ca- that's the best character ever. He's in Nation of Islam. He's Fruit of Islam is a five percenter, but his favorite magazine is like the New Republic. <laughs> like he loves like Marty Perez. <laughs> He's good writing. Um, I gotta say, I'm uh, Terrell is convincing me here because like I, I love this idea that you can analyze world events through watching television. Because, like, you know, I understand this. I've seen The Wire. Uh, as he says, there was a scene in season four where Marlo, along with his top enforcers, Snoop and Chris, approached dealer Bodie on his drug corner. Bodie had the corner humming with business, but Marlo wanted it. Bodie had three ways to respond. He could take Marlo's package, his heroin supply, leave the corner altogether, or fight Marlo. Now, by this point in the series, Bodie had no protection. His former employer, the Barksdale Organization, fell apart after its leaders were either arrested or killed. Bodie was by himself and couldn't defend his territory, so he had to buy drugs from Marlowe until his new boss eventually killed him for snitching to the cops. Like Bodie, the leaders of Ukraine found themselves defenseless against a stronger expansionist Putin who himself has no respect for boundaries. After protesters took to the streets in Kiev in November 2013 to protest former Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych's refusal to sign a trade agreement that would have been integrated that would have integrated the country more closely into the EU economy, Putin soon backed anti-government rebels in the east with military support. They would eventually take over several key regional cities and Russia annex Crimea. Basically, Putin took a corner of Ukraine that was built up and forced its leadership to accept his diplomacy to solve a problem he created. I mean, don't, don't you see this, guys? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's it's like uh, completely completely mirror images of each other. I mean, this is just such a thin thread, though, because like you could, he's using. I mean, admittedly, I'm glad that we get to read more of his prose, but he's using a lot of this to be like, just to say like, oh, uh, Marlo's gangster and takes stuff and so does Putin. Yeah. But it, it's like if if you're using this much space, you could also argue that Putin is like uh, Norm from Cheers or that he's like Dr. Katz or whatever. <laughs> whatever. Like, See, I it's think- just such a thin thread connecting all of it. Um, does anyone remember uh, the character Thomas Jane portrayed on the HBO series Hung? He was a high school gym <laughs> teacher with a huge dick who uh, starts having sex with women as a gigolo for money because of his huge dick. Now, he's not the smartest, the most talented guy, but he is hung. He does have a huge dick and he's using it to lay pipe on um, just sort of horny older women. I think in a lot of ways you could say Putin is a lot like Thomas Jane's character in Hung as well. <laughs> <laughs> and the old ladies in this series scenario are uh, European buyers of uh, natural gas. And he's laying pipe yeah. to them right now. <laughs> he's laying pipe yeah. to them. That's right. Yeah. But like the, when he fucks Natalie Zia and like really likes it, you know, because she's like hot. That's like when he gives weapons to Russian speaking separatists. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm trying to figure out who Ukraine is snitched to in this scenario. Like, who did they who are the, the cops that they snitched to? Oh, well, you know, I mean, obviously uh, uh, McNulty and Bunk. And no, but I mean, oh, uh, I mean yeah. that literally. I mean, Ukraine has complained to the Baltimore Police Department about about Putin taking their corner. Uh, I thought you were going to say they, they've complained to Dominic West. And, and, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, They're calling well, okay. the actor. <laughs> <laughs> is is America McNulty or Bunk? Because it's it's America. I feel America's like Stan Valchek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just okay, a yeah. just a senile uh, oaf, right? I mean, I if we're trying to be more romantic, though, like Terrell is trying to be like, I feel like America and Canada were McNulty and Bunk, right? Because we're the two groups where the two countries where we care about Ukraine the most. Yeah. No one cares about Ukraine like us. Not even uh, Ukrainians. Frankly. No, they do not give a shit as much as your average Ukrainian or uh, Canadian. No way. Um, I would have to say that America is probably McNulty. Because it's like we're always screwing up, but people are like, ah, you know, you tried, you did, you did kind of a good job, like in Afghanistan. And I would say Bunk, he, with his like lovable, uh, his his lovable foibles and extramarital affairs, that would have to be Justin Trudeau in Canada. Does Bunk have extramarital affairs on the show? Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He shoots like, crazy. oh right, right, right. Yeah, he has to get McDulty uh, to pick him up from the bar. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Ugh. 
Yeah, got to got to got to. Somebody is not uh, as up on the shows as they need to be. Yeah, really. I don't know how you expect to analyze complicated world affairs if you're. I need to. I need to go back and study more Ukraine. Yeah, will will um, you know, he can try to make this like movies, but it's like no one wants to know what character in a Knight's Tale Ukraine is. It's just like uh, more, more just, just like, uh, like I said, the, 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 this article here is just padded out with just a plot summary of what happens in the wire. It, it really is impressive. <laughs> I should, I want to say this, like, it's impressive how much, how many words he drew out of this like stone, basically I'm, of a premise. So like, like he really got a lot out of it. You're, you're never yeah. going to guess where he's going with this. So he says here in season four of the series, Marlo was winning a violent street war against the Barksdale organization and other smaller drug outfits. When Marlo wanted someone executed, he would dispatch Chris and Snoop to kill the person in an abandoned home, nail the entrance shut with a power gun and leave their bodies. On the, on the streets, these Marlowe made tombs were known as vacants. Anyone who dared cross the young drug lord found himself in one. Proposition Joe, an east side drug lord who organized the co-op with the city's top dope boys, handled street disputes under a United Nations like framework, joked during one of the meetings that Marlowe can make an inconvenient mm, disappear, can't he? In Russia, the prison system serves as Putin's vacants. Mm. <laughs> wow. So there's a going like prop Joe is like Antonio Guterres. He's like the <laughs> secretary general of the United Nations. There's another parallel. But I feel like the EU being prop Joe is like a way better analogy. I mean, like, yeah, who, who know. knows? I'm just going to like, I can't, this, this article goes on fucking forever and I don't want to spoil the wire for anyone who hasn't watched it yet. But he just says here, uh, just closing it out here. He says, from, from, a, from a foreign policy standpoint, we have to stop positioning America as the more noble side during our engagement with Moscow because both countries are imperialist nations with expansionist agendas. Neither is better than the other. They both do fucked up shit to weaker states. America did invade Iraq in 2003, and NATO felt it was its business to take out Muammar Gaddafi in Libya in 2011. And let's not even get into the United States' long history of interfering to often terrible effect in Latin America and the Caribbean. By viewing U.S.-Russian policy through the lens of the wire, I believe we can analyze more effectively how best to engage Moscow. But to be clear, Putin is like Marlowe. They're both gangsters. But given how dirty both of their worlds are, I just don't think it's fair to single them out as the worst ones. The wire understood this and positioned its depictions of the good guys and the bad guys accordingly. Too bad the men in three-piece suits in Washington and Brussels condemning Putin over his behavior can't look at their own actions with similar honesty and self-reflection. Do you think they would if they saw the wire? I think they would. I think they would. <laughs> yeah, I agree. That was uh, Obama's entire uh, strategy for change was get people to watch the wire. <laughs> and it worked. A okay, lot of people worked. watched it. That's why everything's great. I think I think I want the article about how uh, Putin is actually Martin Tupper from Dream On because every time he gets <laughs> horny, he imagines a 50s movie in his head. <laughs> Okay, I think I think Terrell Starr here. I think he's like the 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 Freeman character. I think he's just sort of like the the quiet, the spectacles fellow who you know people discount, but like then he's actually low key the smartest one around, and he's just like you know building his little doll furniture, um, you know, just like just being quiet, um, but but also he like he's the one who has the analysis that will crack the drug empire of Marlowe, Barksdale, Vladimir Putin. All the pieces matter. <laughs> <laughs> I I am gonna I'm gonna offer it. Uh, I'd like to rework some of this. I think Obama is a guy from a different show. I think he's uh he's the lead character in Banshee because he assumed someone else's name. He assumed the name Barack Obama from his former name Barry Sotero, just like how our hero became Lucas Hood. I I think honestly, if more people had watched the show Banshee, I don't think we would be in the state we are now. Because, I, I mean, like, everyone's trying to analyze foreign policy through through HBO shows that critics like. But if they had seen probably the best show of the last 20 years in Banshee, then, um, I don't know, like, I don't think we've been in this problem. Because, you know, like, Banshee's one the of the bad guys... Wait, wasn't the bad guy in Banshee, like, a Ukrainian gangster? The rabbit? The ra Was there... I thought the was rabbit he, was, he was Russian? Like Serb. Uh, no, I thought he was... I thought he was, like, Serb, but I have to watch it again. Oh, God, I mean, we're... I, I, God, we've 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 yeah. done so bad analyzing foreign policy because we I've, we've already forgotten most of these shows that oh really like God. laid everything out. I mean, uh, this is on another level. This, like he was, in fact, yes, he was a Ukrainian. So oh, there you go. Okay. Everything okay. comes together. I just I like how 
did, did, how did this get published is what I want to know. Because, like, the premise is so fucking thin. Was it, like, they owed him an article and they just kind of had to run <laughs> a- anything? Because this wouldn't... I don't even know how that this would get, like, a passing grade in a community college. You, this I is mean, just, like, such a thin premise. Like, you could... Yeah, like, you, like we said, you could essentially do the same level of analysis comparing Vladimir Putin to the bad guy from any other TV show. Yeah. No, you could, like... You could be like, oh, the world stage is like Darkwing Duck and America's <laughs> Darkwing Duck. Putin's <laughs> the guy he fights. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? And the way the way that he summarizes it at the end is like such good, bad writing where it's like, uh, obviously, like everyone's bad. But I think if we look at it like the wire, we see that the fact that everyone's bad. <laughs> Damn, good job, like, dude. Vladimir Putin is like Shane Vendrell from The Shield, but America <laughs> is Vic Mackey, and if we understood that we were Vic Mackey, then we could deal with the problem. Yeah, because Shane is, is more evil than Vic Mackey. I mean, because that's the thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, like the point here is he's saying is like, yeah, America and Russia, they're both gangster nations, but but Putin is like Marlowe and that he is a new level of, of evil, cold-blooded ruthlessness that you know shocks even the conscience of of, uh, you know, hardened criminals like the United States Empire. And, like, you know, obviously is putting the thumb on the scale for, like, that's why we're actually the good guys in this conflict. <laughs> I saw um, Terrell's thing, uh, the most recent thing I saw him talking about Ukraine, was that Putin's view of Ukrainians mirrors, like, a white supremacist view of black people. Yes, Which that was is, pretty great. Oh, sure. actually, I, I, like, yeah. It was like critical Slav theory or something. <laughs> well, uh, here, here's one that I mean, here's just a couple a couple hits from a Russian star uh, today. Uh, he says here, for all these people saying the West should agree to not allow Ukraine into NATO, I have a question. If Putin can force our hand on that, why would he stop there? Even if Ukraine signed documents never to join NATO, that would not change his behavior. You do realize that telling Ukraine that it should never join NATO is a slap in the face to the one third of the alliance and suggests that none of Eastern Europe should be in NATO or the EU. Continuing, he writes, you do realize that centering France and Germany's thinking and financial interests over Eastern Europeans is offensive and discriminatory, right? If Eastern Europe wasn't in NATO, Russia would be threatening to attack Germany again. (laughs) <laughs> okay yeah sure if, sure why, yeah, why not if you yeah. think if you what think putin's demands should be respected you are you you pretty much are defending eastern european racism it makes sense because most white scholars who hold this view are very much about maintaining white power structures anywhere in the world no one believes in russia's capability quite like russia hawks i don't even think russia believes that like i don't think there's i don't think there's anyone in the kremlin who's like Oh man, I can't wait till we get Ukraine out of the way so we can finally take over Germany. <laughs> like, it's not even clear to me that they think they could win a long term war in Ukraine, like an occupation that would. They probably in. can't. Uh, which is why I think they're trying to do this like smaller bite and and uh, maybe stop there. But but you know the the discourse about Putin in particular, like uh, it's it's unlike anything I, I've seen in any other part of foreign policy like discourse it's it's either uh, you either have to believe that he's a world historical genius like he's the amalgamation of every conqueror that's ever been throughout all of human history and he's constantly like 10 moves ahead of everybody else playing chess he's just this massive uh kind of you know super genius or you have to believe that he's just a buffoon who's constantly backing himself into the corner and like taking L's all over the place. And uh, there's no middle ground. It seems like for, for people when they're commenting, commenting on this stuff, the thing that like drew the latest rounds of like Hitler, like world domination comparisons, uh, taking Crimea in 2014 is like, is that like, is that like the on-ramp to world occupation taking like a tropical six flags? Like, what, what, what are we doing here? Well, I mean, you know, you could say that, but like I, there was another gentleman who thought he could wage a long war against his rivals for total regional domination before it all blew up in his <laughs> face. That's right. I'm talking again about Marlo Stanfield of the wire. Oh, that's right. Oh, Absolutely. You know, I mean, you may wear the Mind crown. Blown. You may wear the crown, but nobody wears the crown for long. 
you know, uneasy is the head that wears the crown because eventually someone else will take the crown. I mean, that's basically the lesson of The Wire, if you've seen that show, as Terrell has. <laughs> and uh, Bernie, Bernie was like Frank Sabatka because he was like, oh, hold on. Can we talk about white people? <laughs> I'm racist. <laughs> uh, Bernie was season two of The Wire. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh! We need to do protectionism, and that would make our show. That would make our show Ziggy. Yeah, we're Ziggy. That's yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think that works. Yep. That holds up. Okay, there we go. Geopolitical analysis via television. I mean, it, it's the way of the future, and honestly, it, it breaks down complicated issues in a way someone like me can understand. A TV watcher. Oh, the oh the Greek is Israel because he's like kind of playing all sides. Because it's like <laughs> it's like on one hand he's like, oh, you know, I'm kind of friends with Russia because they like give me white people <laughs> when, I need, when I need a ton of white people. <laughs> you know, I'm friends with Marlo. Yo, yo, <laughs> the price of Jewish refugees from Russia going up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, this is yeah. actually you know we made yeah, fun of this. Also, this is the, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely the Greek who's also uh, controls the U.S. government. <laughs> 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 he just has to send a fax to that guy in the FBI, and all of a sudden they do whatever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. I think that that puts a bow on it. 